Welcome to the Business of Beauty, where we help beauty entrepreneurs in building their business and reaching their dreams. This is your host, David Lee. Our guest today is focused on a lash and lifestyle brand around professional lash artists, estheticians, and anyone in the beauty industry. She provides lash extensions, shares business tips, runs a podcast, and works with women to grow their businesses. She is most proud of starting her business from the ground up with no technical training or background. It went from a solo passion project to making $360,000 a year. Her superpower is the creativity and making things happen. She can whip up graphics while she sleeps. She loves coming up with concepts for other people's brands and would do it all day if she could. Welcome to the show, Lorena Ashmore at Dear Lash Love. Wow, that was quite the intro. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, you have a nice resume, you know, not, you. tons of experience. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So let, let's let's get started. I like to kind of tell, you know, if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, your business right now, where you're at, what are some of the exciting things that you're currently doing? And then let's okay. jump into a time machine and we'll go back in time and then we'll go into the future. Okay. How's okay. That? I, yeah, I love that. Usually it's the other way around, so I'm into yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> it'll mix um, it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so currently I'm, with everything going on right now, I've strangely been very busy. So I, I have an online store and now that's nice. really taken over most of my income before I was doing services. I was actually mm. doing lashes and now everything is online yeah. and people are still buying from me. So my online store has been, you know, really consistent. I'm really lucky. Yeah. Um, I've just been coming up with new t-shirt designs. So obviously it's mm -hmm. summertime. So I'm coming up with, you know, the shirt I have on right now is like a lighter colored version of a really popular one yeah. uh, that we always have on the website. It says real nice. friends flashes. Can, can and you see the shirt? Yeah. So <laughs> nice. it's, yeah. it's, it's done well. So I've just yeah. kept it on the site and I just do variations of this. Um, nice. So I've just been working on designs for that. And then I actually have my first big ticket item that's going to be on the website that's actually not t-shirts so my focus has always been like t-shirts sweatshirts mm -hmm. accessories this okay. is actually uh like a higher end item that's okay. not any of those things so i've been working on that for you know almost a year wow and been on my to-do list for a while but it just okay. it takes time to save up the money to obviously put into a product like that so okay that is on my way to me now. It should be here at the end of the month. And that will be like a big, probably it's really one of the biggest things I've ever put on my site and the most money I've invested in one, in one shot. Okay. So I'm, okay. Now, I'm can you give us any hints of what it is? It's, uh, it's is it something the that they use girl on the go. What? Yeah. For the girl on the go. Okay. Girl on the go. I, I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. And, uh, you say, okay, it's on the way to you. Does that mean you're going to verify? Is this like the final product? You're going to test it out um, it's already or done. it's already done. So yes. basically, so after that, you can put it on the site and start selling it, right? Yeah. Are you going to do any pre-orders or do a batch order? Or are you going to just say order one? You can order one at a time. I mean, it's funny. I never really think things through like that. I'm very kind of spontaneous with my business in some aspects and I know that that's not great, but it's worked for me. And so I've thought about it. Do I do a pre-order? Do I just kind of drop it? I have a ton yeah. of ideas and I usually just kind of go with my gut and what feels good. So yeah. I've been kind of teasing it a little bit and then I'll send one to my photographer and have her shoot it to make it look yeah. good. And then I think I'll just probably drop it. I have a, you know, a set amount, um, that I'm hoping will sell, fingers crossed. But yeah. I went through like five samples. I had okay. to, you know, get it redesigned, readjusted. The zipper yeah. wasn't working. The pink wasn't the right color. So it yeah. took it. It takes a lot of time. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Now with the online store, um, did did you have did you have the store prior to you know the whole situation that we're all going through right now? Um, or was it more of like, okay, wow, I am now in lockdown. Uh, let's put up a store to kind of push that and pivot the business towards that direction a little bit more. 
I've actually had the online part of my store since, or of my business since 2015. So oh, I've, nice. I've uh, an esthetician, a lash artist since about 2012, 2013. Mm. And then the online part came in 2015. And I actually was kind of, well, at the time I was thinking ahead yeah. that I wanted to be able to make passive income. I was really into reading yeah. books, like, you know, making money while you're laying out by the pool and making yeah. money while you're in bed. And I really was drawn to that because I just, I realized I didn't want to be doing beauty services forever. I couldn't see myself at 50 and 60 sitting in that room, hovering yeah. over my client and doing skincare or doing lashes. And so mm -hmm. lucky for me, I started growing it years ago mm -hmm. and now that's what, you know, supports me. Yeah. So I, that's awesome. I'm, now I, I am lucky because right now is the time that everybody's wanting to start an online business. But yeah. the great thing is that I've already formed the relationships and the trust with people, you know, yeah. so I'm not having to go out and find the customers. They've already yeah. been there. Yeah. And I would say like now more than ever, people are more accepting to buy online where before right. like, okay, I want to go and see the product and feel it. Well, you can't do that anymore anyways. So, you know, so yeah, this is a great, you know, great time to, to be able to sell online now. Um, so in my intro, you mentioned, okay, you went from a solo business, a uh, solo passion project. So, so can you tell us a little bit about that and then going all the way up to 360,000 now, is that in the first year or is that kind of like where you're at now? Like, how did you get to that number? Yeah, I mean, so I went to esthetician school and had been in my treatment room, renting a room, working mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And I just got burnt out on that. Mm -hmm. And what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> um, solo passion, like, like passion. what was your solo passion? It was the, okay. the esthetician piece. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I was in my treatment room. I am, I, I get bored easily. I, it's, yeah. it's, it's a flaw. It's also like one of my greatest qualities because I'm constantly pushing myself and I was just already like, okay, I'm bored. Yeah. Um, I don't want a nine to five. I don't want to be forced yeah. to sit in the room and I don't want my schedule to be based around other mm -hmm. people. I want to yeah. do what I want. And so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's really repetitive work too, right? Very repetitive, yeah. which is why I liked it in the beginning and then why I got bored. Yeah. So <laughs> I was in my room and I yeah. would come to work every day and I would always struggle with finding something to wear to work because it wasn't like an office job, but it wasn't, yeah. you know, casual Friday. So it yeah. was this in between where you could still look trendy and, you know, the beauty industry is about looks. So you've got to be put together. You need to look good. You need to dress good, mm -hmm. dress well. So, um, I was just sitting in my room thinking about passive income mm -hmm. <laughs> and thinking about what, like, like, I don't want to do that, this forever. <laughs> yeah. Like right. okay, what next? And then I just had an idea of, okay, well I could make, I started making aprons for myself and the girls at the place I was working at. I'm like, okay, we'll wear these aprons over our outfits so that we look like we're, we've got a uniform on, but it's not, you know, like a, a lab coat. Yeah. And then from there, I was like, what if I made t-shirts that were, you know, that had like beauty sayings on them or lash quotes or eyebrow, something fun. And you could yeah. wear it with jeans or some slacks, but it's kind of like a, a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. So I, that was kind of where it all started is I started Googling and I researched and, and there was really nobody making any beauty industry apparel. Okay. Um, and I kind of just ran with it. I was like, I need to start this. If I need it, I can imagine there's tons of other women out there that would like it too. Yeah. And you know, it was like, okay, the yoga and, and the gym people, they all have shirts that are like fitness related. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of where I saw it. Like the yeah. Beauty yeah. The, it Ooh, creates a sense it. of community too, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. Now, do your shirts uh, are they? They're they're for beauty, uh, like estheticians. Are they more focused on the like the everyday consumers, like your clients? So initially, I thought about my clients and what I could sell to them, and then yeah. I realized, okay, I need to think bigger. I mm -hmm. should be focusing on other professionals. There's yeah. just I can touch a lot more people that way. Mm -hmm. So it really is geared towards beauty professionals okay. and they can go around and wholesale these to their clients if they want to, yeah. but it really for, you know, professional like estheticians, lash mm -hmm. artists. I've really niched down to just lashes, but you know, I have estheticians, I have hairstylists buying them too. 
Yeah, yeah. Now I'm curious in the beginning, so you were running your salon, you were uh, uh, coming out with these t-shirt ideas, right? Um, so at at what point did you like 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 was that the point where you, like immediately you were you were generating revenue generating income from it like what did it take to kind of get people to start buying your t-shirts so this was at a time where instagram was not what it is today um we i wasn't finding clients on instagram i wasn't mm -hmm. posting to make money off of instagram i mean it's yeah. phenomenal what it's evolved into but mm -hmm. but back then, which it wasn't that long ago, but it's so funny hey. to see how it evolved. Like yeah. it was very old school back then. If I were to, to like look back on it, I it was through Instagram. Like Instagram was kind of just popping up and people yeah. were to use it for their business. And so I just was connected with other estheticians and lash artists on Instagram. And so mm -hmm. naturally I just started, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start posting these shirts and see what happens. Yeah. And it, it really did take off immediately, but I don't quite remember how. It wasn't- <laughs> Everything's a blur. It was all of a sudden, bam, you got orders. Organically, I think it was just, there was no one else had done something like this. And it was okay. at a time where like, now everybody's throwing out amazing products and mm -hmm. photography insane. And back then it was just like more old school. So it was something different yeah. and unique. And I just had fun with it. I just yeah. started posting about them and, you know, estheticians were just sharing it because they loved it. Mm. And so my Instagram kind of turned into this like fun lash Instagram page of like pink and, you know, girly quotes and t-shirts. Yeah. And it was just something new and different that I don't think anyone had seen. So cool. it did, it did grow, but yeah. I wasn't making, I could have been paying myself, but I just kept putting it back into the business. So I was working full time in my treatment room still. Yeah. And then I was doing the shirts on the side mm, and I just okay. kept, you know, I would buy shirts. I'd sell a little bit more. I'd buy more shirts, sell a little bit more. And I yeah. kept recycling the money. So I think that's like yeah. the key thing is businesses take time. And also you can't just spend the money, to make it. Yeah, uh, exactly. No longevity in that. So I had to, I had to watch it kind of grow mm -hmm. for a while before I knew that it was, going to be consistent money okay. and that I was really able to pay myself. And that didn't yeah. happen for, uh, I didn't start paying myself until maybe like 2018. Okay. So like three years later, mm -hmm. right? And it's still, I wasn't paying myself a, you know, a full salary. I was still okay. working in the treatment room. So that was my yeah. nine to five. So that was like your, really your primary source of income yep. three years later, then you're like, okay, well maybe I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take a thousand dollars a month or something. Yeah, I don't know. basically. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I, I finally get paid. <laughs> yeah, it really got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm putting a lot of time into this. Like, yeah. I need to be paying myself something yeah. to reward myself. And mm -hmm. then it, it really did get to the point where I was really busy with both and one of them had to give a little bit. So yeah. I started slowly pulling out of my treatment room mm. and or effort into the online thing and it started growing. And then I realized, whoa, okay, I could actually really grow this into a full-time thing and completely pull myself out of my tree. Okay, around. yeah, yeah. Which now, I'm curious, how did you manage to like move away? Did you start like referring your clients to another esthetician? Did you uh, just pretty much like, they just kind of stopped coming? Like, how was your transition? How did you handle that? I mean, it was kind of just me, myself and I, so I would yeah. send people, you know, to others if I could, but it yeah. really just, I started slowly shrinking my schedule down. I went from okay. five days to then four days and whoever yeah. fit in, fit in. And then I scaled back to three. Mm -hmm. So for a while I was working three days a week, but then I was spending more time on my online side. So I was, yeah. I was still like just as busy, if not busier. So then yeah. I just yeah so your workload yeah. never changed it's the yeah. source of income just pretty much like switched yeah. over to this other you know the, yep. the online platform yep and, and but like really the second i pulled myself out of my treatment room you know by like 80 percent was really when i saw a jump because i was just able to be more creative yeah. and able to actually work on my business instead of being mm -hmm. in it so heavily yeah. So I think that's just something like advice for anyone. I mean, mm -hmm. it's great you want to be in that room, but in order to scale your business, like I I needed to be using other parts of me besides just yeah. sitting 
and services. Yeah, so you need to be like really concentrated, focused, and also be allow yourself a little bit of freedom to be creative. Because I, I, I've seen so many businesses where, especially when they start off, like when they first start off, they're like starving almost, right? They're like, oh my God, I need to generate some income. And there's also this fear of not being able to make it, right? And, and, and survive the next month. So I get it, but then, but if they, do it for too long, they're kind of like, they spread themselves out too thin, right? They become jack of all trades, but then master yeah. of none, and they're just kind of average, right? But in your case, you went all in to the online platform. Sure, it took a while, right? How long did the transition take from like, you know, probably, all the way up to 50, I mean, 80% and to oh shit, all the way up to 100%? What, like four, probably four years? Four years, so was that four years after um, so, so after 2000, so we're now we're in from 2015 to like 2019. So, mm -hmm. so last year was the year we're like, okay, I'm a hundred percent online. I, Pretty much, I, yeah. I don't need to see the clients. It was just a hard pill to swallow, honestly, because I stopped enjoying it because I loved the online part so much. Mm, and yeah. I loved social media. I love creating content. That yeah. was like, I was addicted to that. And so when yeah. I was in that room, I felt like stifled and I just, yeah. Even though it's your own business, right? I know, I know, yeah. but I felt, <laughs> I didn't feel like it was mine anymore. I felt like yeah. I was at the mercy of my clients and I just yeah. kept, it's tough because that's what I got into the industry for is doing mm -hmm. lashes and doing facials. So I felt like yeah. if I wasn't in there, was I actually an esthetician still, yeah. or were people going to still respect me as a lash artist? Because I do have a large following on Instagram because mm -hmm. I promote that I'm a lash artist. And so I felt mm -hmm. like I still had to be in there, but I was miserable and still, you know, yeah. I, I still dabble with like, if, if everything goes back to normal, would I still take a client? And I just, I need have to be true to myself that I just don't enjoy it like I did before. Yeah. I really enjoy this other part of my business so much more. Okay. And I think that's okay. It's it's you yeah. you have to evolve in your business. And I think it's it's good it's good to realize like, hey, I don't really like that part of my business. So yeah. how can I make money doing something that I really, really enjoy? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I and and I I think sometimes like entrepreneurs that business owners, they, they put too much pressure on themselves. You know, it's just like almost like Oh, well, they, they don't see that they meet their own crazy expectations. When in reality, people might think, wow, you're amazing. The work that you do, it's all about really the results, right? Like what kind of results are you producing? Be it like the lashes or the t-shirts the that you're creating, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's just like this, <laughs> this mental challenge. And, and I hope for the viewers that are watching, they understand that. So don't beat yourself up too much. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, again, like, I didn't want to admit that I didn't like taking clients anymore, but what mm -hmm. changed is I, I take clients now, but they're, they're estheticians like me. And so now I'm just helping other beauty professionals instead mm -hmm. of giving my clients a good service. I'm now like mentoring other people. And that's what I yeah. could do all day. Like I love doing that. So it's just, yeah, nice. just everything shifted, but my goal was to not be in my treatment room and now I'm here and then I feel bad about it. I feel like, oh no, uh, should I, should I be in there? You know, I could, maybe I could be making more money, but it just going back to like trusting your gut. Yeah. I just know it's time for my business to evolve. And it's crazy yeah. because people, people think, uh, um, they're like, well, why would you give up your clients? Like it's, it's set money. They come to you every couple mm -hmm. weeks. It's more stability. Yeah. Um, but it's the exact same thing as an online store. I mean, all my customers could go away at any point. So yeah. I well, kind of just trust yeah. my gut on. And, and I, I totally get, you know, what you're doing. And what I would say in that perspective is saying, well, I, I'm getting the most valuable resource that anyone can get. Um, it's right. time. You can't get that back. Yep. So it's like, I can't unfortunately clone myself. I mean, sure. You know, I could hire and train others to do this, awesome. but really, I mean, you know, if you feel like your life and soul is getting sucked away, being in the yeah. treatment room, then, you know, it's like, why do it? Right. Yeah. So yeah. And you, you saw the opportunity and you, you're able to pivot. So that's, that's, that's amazing. And I encourage others to do that too. Like, like even if, if you have started the business, right. And and you're like, oh man, I invested all this time and money, 
but it's still not, you know, you're not feeling it, then, then pivot, you know, leverage what you know, and maybe you can Absolutely. go into a different business model, but still be in the same industry. If the industry right. is something that you're still passionate about. I mean, yeah, I think it's just being open. Like I never, yeah. never in a million years would have, would have pictured this for myself that I would have just graduated from esthetician school and now be making money off of an online store. I could have never pictured that. So <laughs> being open to change mm -hmm. and realizing that, you know, parts of your business will grow and, and that's, that's a good thing. So yeah. I, just ha I had to shift gears. Um, and you know, by pulling myself out, I was able to make more money. So yeah. I was capping awesome. out couldn't physically take any more clients. There was yeah. no other, I couldn't, like you said, I couldn't cl clone myself. Yeah. And it was really hard to find somebody to take over for me, quite honestly, because yeah. people in the beauty didn't know that most of our clients come to us because they want us. Yeah. They're not coming for, they are coming for lashes, but they're coming because they enjoy their time with me or with you. Yeah. So it was hard for me to go find someone. My clients quite honestly were like, if you're not touching my face, I don't want anyone else to touch my face. So <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I, yeah, I could only work so many hours and so many days. So now yeah. I'm able to work when I want and I, and now I can make more money. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, now can, can you provide us a, a little bit more like the numbers you mentioned, like the 360,000 is that, from your online store now or like was that part of back in 2015 yeah that was partly that well that was last year i was only taking uh, i wasn't taking that many clients so that those numbers are pretty accurate for my online okay. store nice nice um, and I, I was very shocked by that you know i i don't have a finance background i'm not a numbers person i was just working and just grinding and then was like right. oh wow i actually made a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's cool yeah <laughs> but now, I put a lot of it back into my business so you don't see three hundred and sixty thousand dollars yeah yeah um and yeah. of course you have to pay yourself but mm -hmm. i had to invest a big chunk into this new product that i'm going to be launching you know yep. so it's like i've got to keep growing it i can't just spend it yeah. so i think that People think it's glamorous and like, ooh, you have an office, <laughs> making all this money, but like, it's a lot of work and a lot of money that gets dumped back into it. Yeah, yeah, like entrepreneurship. Sell a t-shirt, you know? It's like, there's a yeah. photo shoot, there's um, all these things that go behind just making a sale on a shirt. So it's yeah. not it's not easy, it's really not, yeah. but I'm passionate about it, so it makes yeah. it easy. Now I'm curious, so uh, uh, what else do you, so what else do you sell? Do you sell anything else other than the shirt? I mean, as of now. So right now I sell sweatsuits, I have t-shirts, I have like scrunchies, pop sockets. So a lot of smaller items that you can mm -hmm. wholesale to your clients. Um, and then I have a shirt subscription, which like Ooh, really- It's like the box? Yeah, so they basically, they get a new shirt every month. Yeah. And usually I'll throw in some sort of freebie. Yeah. Um, this month they're getting an actual a bottle of adhesive with their shirt so it's a really big it's a it's uh it's a really expensive bag that they're getting for cheap oh, okay. so i launched that in 2018 because i felt like okay these girls want you know they're wearing the shirt to work every week yeah. so why not give them a new one every month that yeah. they can wear okay, um nice. and that that really shifted my business too once that got off the ground running i realized i didn't need to take clients anymore yeah nice nice now you mentioned um, you also you know coach and and help other um, you know like estheticians and beauty entrepreneurs. So how does that work? Do they do, they, do you have a, a set program that that you have them go through? Is it more of a, a a you know an hour or multiple session kind of like a consultation? Like what like and also where do you where do you find your clients? In that area. So from having this business and growing this community, mm -hmm. I, my friend Casey, who you've also had on the podcast, mm -hmm. he does similar things for the skincare industry. So we created yes. a podcast together where we were able to like share what we know mm -hmm. with our listeners, with the industry. Yeah. But from there, I feel like as an individual, women are always coming to me, asking me, what adhesive I like, what tools I like, how do I st mm -hmm. oh, start a website? Um, I don't know what to do with my social media. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to give all those tips on, on yeah. my Instagram, which I do, but I feel like they need one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like to say coaching, but it's like, 
it's doing, it's basically girl talk one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm walking them through the basics of their business. You know, a lot of them are just on their own like I was, and yeah. they don't know how to um, form an LLC or they don't know how to make their Instagram look, look aesthetically pleasing. And they don't have a mentor to help yeah. them. So I was already giving all this information away on Instagram anyway, but I figured, mm -hmm. okay, they need more in-depth help. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be able to do that. So it's pretty, they just email me. We kind of go over like, okay, what specifically do you need help with? And then I just have like a 30 minute or an hourly rate. Nice. Uh, nice. But it's kind of like, it's pretty broad. I want them to tell me whatever they need help with. So it's not um, anything super specific. Um, but I do, I do like teaching girls how to vamp up their Instagram. So that's something I've been really busy with. Okay. Now, what, um, what has? Yeah, I've done my own social media and like really marketing since the beginning. I've never paid anyone, and it's just something I really enjoy. So, uh, okay. I like to teach others how to do that. Okay. Do you do you? Um, so, since you mentioned Instagram, do you do any of the paid side, or is it purely organic? It's been purely organic. I will say I've run maybe three ads on Instagram before, okay. but I've never done like a Facebook ad. I've never done anything paid. It's really, truly been organic, word of mouth, and just, I truly believe like having a unique product before anyone else had it. That was my advantage. I, I'm i not saying that I, I think I make the best t-shirt in this industry, but it's all about like the branding and the marketing and the story behind it and it's, it's more than just a shirt. And I think that's why it's done so well. It's like, I'm not just selling you a t-shirt. I'm, I'm offering you help in your business and I'm mm -hmm. empowering you in your business, like through the shirt. So I, yeah. that sounds so cheesy, but like, yeah. I really focus on making um, the branding feel like there's a purpose behind it, you know? Yeah. So cool. anyone could sell a t-shirt, they can. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, and that's how yeah, we're all approaching. Okay, very cool, very cool. Now, uh, from your, your 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 coaching experience and on all the entrepreneurs that that have been asking is there like this common question that the challenge that they always face what's the most common yes uh mostly it's i i don't know where to begin okay. um or two is i don't know how to make my so like i don't know what, what to post on social media mm. um, a lot of it is how do I get followers? How do I get more people to engage with me? Yeah. But those are the main things that I keep seeing. And okay. my answer is always like, for one, you just have to start. You don't have to be perfect. Just do it. <laughs> you just have to do it yep. because I did it. And I look back and my social media was terrible, but I got better. So you have to start somewhere in order to, to improve. Yeah. And then you know, how do I get engagement? You've got to be giving something to people that they, they want to hear, that they want to know more about. So yeah. it can't about you it's got to yeah. be about the followers like mm -hmm. and your clients you know what what are they interested in you need to pick their brains mm -hmm. i know my followers want to know business tips so i try and share as many as i can yeah um, because that's okay. what they want um and just like i think just insecurities of social media because everybody's looking around at everybody else's and i'm sure people look at mine and i look at other people's and i'm like oh theirs is way better than mine but i just I always tell people, you know, your clients come to you for a reason. They like you. They like your personality. Just yeah. let's care a little bit less what people think. Yeah, and yeah. and you also you can look at the other spectrum too. I mean, you can see some of these, uh, you know, social media accounts and profiles that are really bad, but yet they have a ton of followers or a ton mm -hmm. of likes. You know, it's, I think it, you know, on that note, it's like, it's all based on the, value and the content that you give a little less on like they don't you know i think it's more and more accepting of like okay well it doesn't they don't have the most high-end you know camera they didn't have the highest end uh you know backdrop or the highest end of this or that it's like was the content good all right yeah, yeah. i mean some of my best pictures have been from my iphone you know people wa people want to feel connected to something so sometimes yeah. you have to i always tell clients i'm like sometimes you have to throw up a picture of a product that you love and it might not get a ton of likes but it's part of your brand yeah. like you have yeah, to show yeah. it so that people know that you carry it and then you can turn around and throw in a really personal valuable post that people right. might love but it, it's yeah. not going to be like that every day it's just mm -hmm. it is what it is yeah um, 
but I've heard companies that would like low, like pretty much degrade the quality of their their image. You know, just like like you basically use the iPhone or use the you know use a more basic camera to kind of give it more of a realistic feel for yeah. to kind of connect and engage with their audience rather than oh wow this is completely photoshopped which is you know right. obvious Every, anyone can yeah. see yeah that's a photoshop picture i can't look like that right yeah now you're not connecting with your audience well i think that's why instagram stories are so great so you can use the feed to showcase the beautiful images because i do think those are important especially for like a product shot i think it's yeah. you got to make sure it's clear but as mm -hmm. far as like a human, people want to see me being me they don't yeah. th they might appreciate a really dolled up photo of me in my t-shirt, but they like the behind the scenes of me just being my normal self. So I think that's why this Instagram stories are so popular is people want more of like the real stuff and they want the behind the scenes. So I always tell my clients too, I'm like, focus on just showing your personality more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, all the amazing advice and we could talk for hours. I know. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's uh, we're gonna have a, a extended weekend and uh, you know I want you to enjoy your weekend and thank you so much for being on the show now uh, one last question now I guess for any 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 last bit of advice for um, anyone that's thinking about starting their business especially in these crazy times right what would you say to them I would just say to, to be to be easy on yourself, especially right now. Um, <clears throat> but just to remember that if you're coming from the beauty industry, we we have an advantage. We have so much information that we can share with people, share with our clients. And so I feel like we just need to all have more confidence in what we know and not be afraid to share it. And from that, hopefully something organic can come from just sharing and just educating people and helping others. I mean, I, that's really how I grew my business is like taking it off of me and putting it and focusing on other people. So, but again, just remembering how much we've learned in school, um, in, and just learned in the beauty industry and like that we really do have an advantage over most people. So we need to get the confidence back and get out there and share more. Love it. Love it. And now saving. A savings count. That's my other thing. <laughs> yeah, savings. Okay, have a savings, especially yeah. now, right? Yeah. So I'll, just I always save. I always say whatever I've made, I take like fifty percent away from that. So mm. the beauty industry, you're able to make quick cash. You're able to take clients, and you get paid immediately. It's yeah. really easy to blow the wad. So yeah. whatever you've made that day, cut it in half and put half in the savings yeah. account. So just don't blow your grow. stimulus money. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, uh, awesome advice. Um, so how can our community, our, you know, our viewers reach you? So my Instagram, my website is all dear lash love. Um, I obviously sell lash inspired apparel, t-shirts, accessories, but I talk a lot about, about, about growing your business from the ground up and give basic business tips. I love sharing that. And then I also offer the you know one-on-one -on -one coaching so you could email me at Lorena it's l-o-r-e-n-a at dearlashlove.com and I, yeah i'd love to work with anyone that wants to shoot me an email nice. awesome well thank you so much for being on the show and viewers i hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time bye